Hello, I'm Commissioner of Agriculture Steve Troxler and today I'm continuing with a series of videos about the different divisions in the department and, and how they affect you every day. Today we're going to talk about the veterinary division and I'm here at Rollins Lab uh, in the necropsy section of the laboratory and the vet division has a tremendous job in North Carolina. We are a major protein producing state in the nation. Uh, somewhere around 10% of all the protein, whether it be uh, our hog industry, our broiler industry, our turkey industry, our egg industry, even uh, sources of protein from sheep and goats, uh, emus, uh, they are primary goal is to keep all of these animals healthy in North Carolina and these are millions and millions of animals. And they also have to oversee the interstate movement of these animals by testing and, and regulation to ensure that animals that leave North Carolina or animals that come into North Carolina don't have some type of disease that could spread to other parts of the country. I think we also all saw during the uh, outbreak of uh, COVID-19 how fragile the protein supplies can be. This veterinary division is a vital link to the health of the animal industry and the continued uh, supply of protein that you need every day and see on the grocery shelves, in the restaurants, in school cafeterias, and at the university. So this is a big job that they do, and uh, I want to talk a little bit more about the lab system. I mentioned that I'm here in the veterinary lab, uh, at, at the veterinary lab, which is called Rollins Lab. But this is the central lab that we have, and it's in Raleigh. But uh, I have with me Dr. James Trivis, and I want to uh, talk about the lab system. We have satellite labs across the state also. Yes, sir. Officer, so the Rollins Lab is our main full service lab, but we also have three branch laboratories that are small laboratories that uh, the Rollins Lab supports. So we have a laboratory in Elkin, a uh, laboratory in Monroe, and a laboratory out in Western North Carolina, Fletcher, North Carolina. You know, we're here in the uh, necropsy section of the lab, and I'm not sure that uh, people maybe understand what a necropsy is. Would you explain what a necropsy is? Sure, absolutely. So a necropsy is essentially an autopsy on an animal. So uh, where we do an autopsy or a necropsy on an animal, it could be a, a food animal, uh, a cow or a pig, or it could be somebody's beloved pet that passed away suddenly. And the necropsy is an autopsy exam where we try to determine the cause of death. Either to give some closure to somebody who lost a pet, or, or more importantly, to help limit the spread of disease in a herd or a flock. I talked about the animal health of uh, the different types of animals we have in North Carolina, but uh, I know one of the major things is surveillance for foreign animal disease. What kind of foreign animal disease would you be looking for uh, in our animal population? So some of the more important ones we've done, and we do them quite frequently, is uh, foot and mouth disease in, in swine, and it could affect cows, and it could, could affect other rabbits too. But foot and mouth disease is something that's not in our country. Some of the lesions we might see can mimic some of the things we have here. So in the swine industry, they see Seneca Valley a lot. That's a virus that could cause a similar lesion like you might expect with foot and mouth disease. And probably, I would say at least monthly, we're, we're responding to these cases where they find some of these lesions in the pig and we have to identify and rule out uh, foot and mouth disease. Another big concern is African swine fever. So that's not here yet. Uh, it's mostly in, in China and some of those areas. But we've really ramped up our capacity to test for African swine fever because the concern is that it might come here at some point. Well, I know the early detection of any foreign animal disease is so, so important and not. I may be working in partnership with USDA and other agencies uh, to make sure that that doesn't happen. How tight is that partnership with USDA? It's very tight. So we work very closely with the USDA uh, and the other divisions of uh, North Carolina agriculture. But with USDA, I'm either on the phone uh, or email contact with them daily. This is a very, very important part of your food supply, and I hope you understand how hard the vet division works to make sure that we do have the protein available for the grocery shelves and for people to eat on the daily basis. Just, 
I have with me now Dr. Doug Leckis, uh, who is the state veterinarian. And the state veterinarian is a very important position in uh, not only the Department of Agriculture, but also uh, in state government and also uh, the, the nation. And with our ranking in uh, protein in the nation, and our state vet has got to be in constant consultation with other state vets, but also the USDA to, to make sure that we're on the cutting edge of what we need to be doing to prevent animal disease. Okay. Uh, not only does the vet division take care of the labs and, and those kind of animal uh, health responsibilities, but we have very wide sweeping responsibilities in the vet division. So, Doug, how about talk about some of the other things that we do with the vet Thanks, Commissioner. And, and, uh, more than pleased to talk about our veterinary division and the other sections uh, independent of the laboratory. We, we have our poultry section, our livestock section, and our animal welfare section. Uh, obviously, as the commissioners mentioned, we are a significant producer of protein uh, among states across the country, uh, particularly pork and poultry. Uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, animal agriculture industry in the state of North Carolina makes up 68% of the $10 billion in cash receipts that makes its way into North Carolina each year. Uh, mention was made of disease, and we are ever on the watch for disease, particularly those uh, diseases that Dr. Trivis mentioned, foot and mouth disease, African swine fever, uh, in the poultry industry. We've just come through an infection of, of, in our turkey industry of low, path, low pathological avian influenza, and which ultimately transitioned to something that's even greater threat highly pathogenic avian influenza, which can infect humans. So every day, our team, some of our 150 employees are on farms all over the state of North Carolina. We're testing animals for disease. We're working with our industry in partnership to make certain that animal movements are done correctly, that, that animals that come into the state have met all the test requirements. And, and in addition, animals that leave our state meet all the requirements for our partners in ag animal agriculture industry across the, the nation. You know, we've talked a lot about uh, meat animals, but let's go a little bit more into other types of animals that we work with, uh, such as our robust horse industry. Y yes, Commissioner. Obviously, uh, North Carolina uh, has a significant horse industry, and the Department of Agriculture has a number of facilities throughout the state where horse shows take place. Uh, many times on a weekly basis, weekend basis, and uh, uh, the, the horse industry contributes uh, significantly to our animal agriculture industry as well. So we're always fully supportive of them and, and their endeavors, and uh, uh, some of our team will be on the ground at these horse shows, uh, again, making certain there's no disease, making sure the paperwork is correct for horses that make their way into North Carolina from other states. And I know we've had some uh, outbreaks of Triple E, Eastern Equine, and Sunlightus, and, and I always, uh, you know, mention vaccinate your horses, vaccinate your donkeys, vaccinate your mules. How serious a disease can that be? Well, many times the disease is fatal, Commissioner, and even more importantly, it's a zoonotic disease, that is, a disease that can spread from, by, by a vector from the horse to humans. So, uh, it's very important, especially this time of the year, to keep those horses vaccinated and prevent the spread of a, uh, Eastern and Western encephalitis. You know, uh, probably one of the things that we do that affects uh, more people in the state of North Carolina that are not in agriculture than anything else is the animal warfare section. You bet. And the inspections, and do they explain uh, the animal warfare law and the things that we do? Well, Commissioner, the, the animal welfare section operates under the animal welfare, welfare laws of the state of North Carolina, and there are over 900 shelters, kennels, rescue operations, pet stores that our animal welfare section team visit on an annual basis, sometimes more frequently. Uh, we are, again, making certain that the animals are properly cared for, making certain that they're healthy uh, in those environments, and, uh, uh, and of course, for uh, citizens of North Carolina, shelters are a wonderful place to adopt a pet and, and take them home and find a good home because otherwise uh, that might not be a possibility for them. Dr. Buckles, we have seen, especially in China, how serious uh, African swine fever can be as far as the, the 
population of uh, homes and of course that's a concern for us. But the one thing that I'm proud of too is, and I gotta brag on you a little bit, you came to us from Homeland Security after being uh, a vet here in North Carolina for a long, long time. So North Carolina's been plugged in to this African swine fever threat nationally, and I know you've been a leader uh, in that respect, so talk a little bit about that. Commissioner, after the August 2018 identification of African swine fever in China, we've learned that as many as 300 million pigs, heavy pigs and hogs, have died as a result of this disease. And to put that into perspective, in North Carolina, we normally have around 9 million hogs, yes. and we're the second leading producer of hogs in the nation. So That's correct. Compare what we're doing in North Carolina to 300 million, that's how serious this is. You know, I'm really proud that we've been able to do the work that we've done in animal welfare. And being a dog lover myself, as you are, yes, sir. we both understand the importance of the proper care of these animals, so that not in the home setting or they're being adopted or, or in the shelter. So uh, that, uh, I thank you and the animal welfare section for everything you've done to, to move this forward out to the beginnings we had. And, Writing the rules for this and uh, now we hopefully improve the paper bill. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed this update on the Vet Division and the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Join me next week for an update on another division in the Department of Agriculture.